clock right here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That was some good singing. Amen. It's hard to follow that, you know, because what I, I'm pretty monotone, you know, from the north. But, uh, amen. And uh, what a beautiful day the Lord gave us. What a good day. Yes. Amen. And um, anyways, I want to apologize. As you see up here on the, this little projector, you see my family. I'm sorry they could not come. It was just too much driving. Uh, this morning I drove from Harrison, Ohio uh, by Cincinnati. And I drove three and a half hours down towards a little place called Whitley City, Kentucky. I was there this morning and then I came over this way. A lot of miles and uh, just a lot of wear and tear, and uh, but it's good to be here. I told your pastor yesterday, I don't know, I hope I make it. My vehicle's having problems, you know. I started my vehicle to go leave and it died, and uh, just, I just went by faith and I made it here. So, uh, <laughs> so praise the Lord. And uh, I got a little PowerPoint, but just if you don't know who we are, we're just sinners saved by the grace of God. That's right. Yeah, that's right. right. There's nothing special about us, uh, you know, just the Lord has been very merciful. And uh, it's good to be back here. It's about five years ago I was here, I believe, and uh, I never, uh, I didn't think I'd be back here so quick, to be honest. But God is having us transition, and it's good to be here tonight. Uh, I feel like it's, uh, I'm getting my battery charged. You know? yeah. and, uh, don't overload, though. That's not good either. You know? Too much charge. And um, anyways, I grew up in Wisconsin on a dairy farm, and uh, I don't think there's a lot of farming here, is there? Cattle? A little bit. And uh, anyways, to make it real short, how I became a missionary is uh, I grew up on a dairy farm. I was saved at six years old, bedside. I grew up in the Lutheran Church. And as you know, the Lutheran Church is very messed up. Uh, but uh, praise the Lord, I was saved because of my family being saved and they knew Jesus Christ. And uh, anyways, I grew up in a milky Lutheran Church. And uh, the only time they say amen in the Lutheran church is when church is over. If they're, you know, they say amen, we're done, go home, eat, you know. And uh, Anyways, I grew up and I wanted to be a dairy farmer. And uh, every year, I, you know, when you're in school, a kid always draws a picture of what he wants to be when he grows up. You know, I want to be a uh, truck driver. I, drove, I always drew farmer, farmer, farmer. Professional athlete, farmer, farmer. <laughs> and, uh, but anyways, when I was 18, my dad sold the farm, and that closed the door. And you know our Lord, he hates idleness. That's right. Uh, so when he closes the door, he opens the door. Yep. And I had a little hard time to find the open door, or maybe I didn't like it. Uh, but I wanted to go to a Bible school, but I ended up going to college for three months and uh, taking out student loans. I started to get bombarded with evolution. And uh, you know how it is at college. The, the environment is horrible. It's wicked. And uh, at least at the college I was. Maybe you found a good college. Uh, where I was, it was uh, basically sin was coming in. And uh, but God got me out of there, and I knew I needed to go to a Bible school. And uh, I ended up at Pensacola Bible Institute. Have you ever heard of that little school? And that's where I met my wife, Graziella. She's the oldest of eight. Uh, she grew up on the mission in Sicily, Italy. So if you, have, if you know Italy, it's like a foot kicking to a little soccer ball. And uh, you got two islands down there, Sardinia and Sicily. Sicily is where the mafia are from. And so they say, if you can't beat them, join them. So I just joined them, amen. I right in, I married uh, there. I got, now I, I, know, I know all the noodles that you can know in Italian cooking. And uh, anyways, I'm gonna go a little slideshow here, so praise God. And I have, to, I have to give you a warning, it's very long. Don't fall asleep. But I'm going to preach as I go through it, and I'm not going to keep you that long. I'm going to look at the clock after I'm done. And this thing has some preaching laced in there. So, anyway. So, as you see here, the family, and we serve the Lord as a family. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, that's what the church started out with, was family. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. That's right. Man, and uh, God, uh, that's how God operates, his families. And so we're going overseas. We've been overseas, and we serve the Lord as a family. So, South Tyrol, you may know nothing about it. And neither, neither did I. I didn't know anything about this place. Never even thought about it. Until the Lord showed me. I'll show you that in a second. So what I want to say here tonight is you don't know where you're going to be next year. Amen? Right. Amen. Amen. You sit here tonight and you say, it's just a normal Sunday night service. <clears throat> well, you don't know what God might have you do. Amen? Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord. God will do. Uh, God will use us. Amen? That's right. right. So going on here. Uh, it works here. Let's see. Lord. So as you see here, we lived uh, 
So I knew that. We lived on the border of Austria and Switzerland, and the reason being was there was a good church in East Switzerland called Bible Baptist Church, and we needed to learn German, and there was just a good uh, Bible-believing man there in East Switzerland, highly recommended, uh, being there for almost 20 years, a Dutchman. And anyways, uh, we went over and got plugged into Bible Baptist Gemeinde, and um, we spent two and a half years on the border of Austria and Switzerland, and uh, then we went a year and a half up in northern Germany. I'll show you that in a second. Um, my wife and I are both dual citizens. You see up there the LU, that stands for Luxembourg. I have that citizenship also. I reclaim that through my family. And my wife has Italian citizenship. That means we don't need paperwork over in Europe. So we can go within the European Union without uh, visas. Uh, but anyways, uh, we lived two and a half years here. And then now this is South Tyrol right here, this yellow area. And right in our backyard, never went there, went all over everywhere else except right here. So for the two and a half years, the Lord had us there, tunnel vision, learn German, and help in the local church. So, this is our first home up on the left there. We lived in, a, in the middle of the house. We had a family of us and below us. Uh, we lived in, on the Rhine River, uh, that cuts between Austria and Switzerland. Uh, we had some people give us some food. And praying for us. Prayer works, amen? Amen. I wouldn't be here without prayer. I know that. I can guarantee you 100% I would not be here without amen. people praying. Amen. So God is good. God works through prayer. That's right. Amen. And uh, the <coughs> school you see there, and uh, God is able to uh, help you. If, if God were to call you anywhere on this planet, God can give you the, a language to do it. Amen. Amen. And where God guides, God provides. That's what they right. say. And uh, in every way. So... This is Brother Nico and his wife Adana. This is the brother and sister that minister over in Bible Baptist Church. Thou therefore in your hardness is a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And uh, you know by now if you've been living for the Lord, it's not always about dishing it out, it's about taking the blows. It's yes. about taking it and keep on going. Amen. And that's what we have to do for Jesus Christ. Because that's what he did for us. And uh, this is my daughter up there looking out her window at her first neighbor. Now our neighbor lived about 50 feet away. This is our first neighbor we've ever had as a family. This old 90 old Catholic lady named Lotte. And so this is our first neighbor overseas. And there is no chance for the Christians walk. As you know, there is no chance. And God put us there for a reason. And we witnessed this old lady for two and a half years. She did not get saved. Uh, but my wife had a real burden for her. And uh, just a special burden to see her saved. So in the last two weeks, we lived in Austria. My wife went over to her. Uh, she was turning 93 at the time. A little birthday gift my wife wanted to give her. And she fell over at that time in the house, broke her foot. And at that moment, what my wife said, uh, it's hard to believe. <coughs> this is a true story. I don't make up any, everything I'm telling you is true stories. You know? <laughs> and she fell over right there in front of my wife. My wife said to her, you don't have a lot of time left to live. Like talk to you about your soul, and she got saved right there. Amen. Amen. And uh, what I want, if I could, if I have a little time here preaching a little bit, I don't know how much time I have, but um, just keep going. Okay. <laughs> I'll find out. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, our society is not is not geared towards the value of one. Right. But God is. Amen. And, uh, there's a lot of joy in heaven over this one sinner. She knows today. She's 95, I believe, or 96. She knows to this day when my wife calls her, she knows she got saved from that meeting right praise there. Praise the Lord. Amen. So praise the Lord. And um, this is the architecture here. Now in Europe, the church is the center of society. That's why people came to America. The church has the grip on all the people. Um, and I mean Catholic church and Lutheran church. Um, if you want to type in and find the center of the city, you can just type in church square or market square. And you'll go right to an old Catholic church or a Lutheran church. And that's what's in the center of the city, usually. And uh, anyways, this is a uh, church here I was preaching at. Um, right here. And this, this man here, Amel Zepich, is the first soul that was saved only speaking German. So that was a huge blessing after being there a year. Hey, we don't, our language is not good, but we know enough to get a fish in the boat. Amen. Amen. And uh, that's another lesson, is God will use what he's given you. God doesn't expect anything from you that what He's already given you. That's Amen. Right. Amen. That's good. And um, I told you I was going to, pre I was going to preach a little bit in this. I better not preach too much in this. I'm going to do this last forever. Anyway. Uh, this is um, this is a potato machine up on the top, and this is carpentry on the bottom. And over in Europe for the four years that we were there, I had to work a part-time job for health insurance. 
Uh, they have social medicine over in Europe, uh, but I'm not a refugee, so I had to work. And I uh, was able to get health insurance for my family, work for a Catholic up in Germany, work for a Catholic in Austria, and God uh, did miracles through the job. Uh, this is a little bit of outreach that we were able to do over there. We did some bigger outreaches with a, there's a group called Couriers for Christ. Maybe you've heard of them. And as this group came over, they gave us 100,000 John Romans, 5,000 Old Reformation Luther Bibles, and uh, we were able to invite people to receive a Bible, hear the Gospel, and get some special music. And um, anyways, it was a blessing, I have to say. We didn't, we didn't have, we only have one place in Germany that prints our Bible, and they stopped printing it almost. So anyways, this, uh, this guy here, Rudolf, in the bottom right here, you see this man here, uh, he, he walked by as I was out there and it started to rain. I was outside for 15 minutes trying to invite people to this uh, conference and uh, hear the gospel. And I looked at him as he walked by and I said, why don't you come tomorrow night the way you are? And if you listen, you can leave the Son of God. He came, he listened, and he got saved. Amen. Amen. And... Uh, <coughs> I'll tell you what, God is still saving him, huh? That's right. Amen. Amen. Here and overseas. Amen. And uh, it was good to see him get saved. Uh, iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. As you know, we can only be sharpened from that book right there. Right. Right. Uh, and from good preaching. And I hope you came to get sharpened tonight. Amen. 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 You can always be sharpened. Now, when you sharpen anything, what happens? Sparks fly. There's heat. There's contention. This New Age Christianity is unbiblical. Right. This New Age Christianity puts peace ahead of purity. Right. The Bible says the, the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable. And to have some edification, sometimes there is a little contention. Sometimes you feel, that guy's attacking me from up there. No, he's not. <coughs> he's trying to edify. Oh, man. And that's real preaching, and that's real fellowship, too. Right? <laughs> real fellowship has to have some salt in it. And that's, yeah. what, that's, what, that's why we're vowing with him, huh? And um, anyways, we have some good fellowship overseas with some brethren. We get around that book, and uh, praise God, we can sharpen each other. And that's another thing. It doesn't even matter what language you serve, God, you serve the Lord in. God's Spirit is a spirit on this whole planet. Okay. Sure. Amen. And what I mean by that is that language, culture, there's, there's a lot of roadblocks for a missionary. You know, at the end of the day, flesh is flesh, and God is God, and the devil still uses the same tricks overseas. Yeah. And uh, anyways, we also sold the word overseas here, a little bit of uh, East Germany here from Berlin down in Dresden. This is where Luther did his work. And uh, anyways, you see we've been able to do some sewing with banners, street preaching. And street preaching is one of the, is, in my opinion, the purest form of evangelism there is. Right. It's getting on the streets, and they have to listen. You know? yeah. And wisdom cry that within the gates. And uh, anyways, we were able to do some witnessing. I went over to London one weekend. And you say, what are you doing over in London? Well. Like Wesley said, the world is my parish, amen? Mm -hmm. And any opportunity a preacher gets, he prays over, and the Lord sent me over there for a weekend to be a blessing to a local church. And at the end of our time there, we went to a, a cemetery. And it's called Bun Hill Cemetery. And there's people there that you know, Isaac Watts. Mm -hmm. you, in your hymn book, if you look at it, you'll see Isaac Watts all the way through. Right. Uh, you see Susanna Wesley is buried there. Uh, John Fox, Fox's Book of Martyrs. John Bunyan. Now, if you have to have three books... And you can only have three. You can have a Bible, <coughs> Fox's Book of Martyrs, and John Bunyan, Token of Progress. And you'll be set. And uh, anyways, we sang a hymn by his grave, and he wrote one hymn, and it's to be a pilgrim. And I want to read that first verse to you. Who would true valor see let him come hither? One here will constant be, come when, come whether. Well. There's no discouragement. Shall make him once relent. His first about intent to be a pilgrim. Amen? Right. And uh, you're a pilgrim and a stranger on this earth. You're not in this world. Amen. The day you got saved was the day you got, you could say, abducted from the world. You got taken out of the world's hands. Yep, right. You got translated, whatever you want to say, adoption. And um, you're a pilgrim. You're waiting until he says, come up hither. Right. And uh, you can only take with you what you've already laid up there. Yep. Treasure is laid up. And um, our pilgrimage took us up to Germany, northwest Germany. And uh, as you know, we were, last time we were here, we were on our way to the fatherland, Germany. And uh, we did get to Germany, amen? But well, little did I know that was only a springboard, only a chapter of transition <laughs> in God's plan. And uh, because the area we're going to now, South Tyrol, you have to know German, and you have to know Italian. And uh, anyways, what happened was we went up to Germany, 
And after two and a half years in Austria, it came time to get all the nests. And if you have kids, you know what that's like, amen? You, know? you gotta get them all the nests. They have to learn on their own. It's like taking the train wheels off a kid's bike. He might fall once, but he has to do it. And what I mean by that is we went over as baby missionaries. We're still baby missionaries. But we served under another guy, and there was a time where we needed to get on our own. We needed to learn some things. We needed to learn the culture and use what we've learned and get it out there. Right. And uh, you can only learn that by going on your own. You're never, uh, you ever heard of Richard Warmbrand? He said, you're never more alone than when you're alone, amen? <laughs> and God's school, some of the greatest chapters of your life are going to be one-on-one -on -one with Jesus Christ. That's right. That's right. And uh, anyways, uh, what happened was, it's, I prayed, Lord, it's been time now. We know our journey good enough to uh, get out there and minister the word, souls are being saved. Do you want us to now go to northern Germany where there is no missionary? Amen? <coughs> a missionary is looking for a dark area. I am a missionary. I'm looking, and it's just like anyone, a Christian, we are looking to do something for God in a dark area. And uh, Paul, that's what his, Paul's desire was, is to preach Christ where Christ is not named. Amen? There are places that don't have a preacher. I know it's hard to believe. Is how can they hear without preachers? There are places that don't have as many preachers, and you got a blessing to have one, amen? There are places that don't have them. And uh, anyways, so I prayed, Lord, what about Northwest Germany? There is no preacher there. There's no missionary that I know of. And the Lord gave a green light, said go. So we moved up to northern Germany, and then I said, finally, I'm tired of moving. I hate moving, amen? I like to know everyone by first name. <laughs> and uh, anyways, we went up to northern Germany, and we started to get a church track and go on the highways and hedges to start church. Well, one thing led to another, and the main thing was circumstances. Just seemed It seemed as if the Lord was pulling back, saying, Hold on, son. I don't want you to stay here forever. Now, the Germans, right away, the Germans are very direct, if you know German people. They said, How long are you staying? And I said, I'll be here till I die. I'll be buried over there in the graveyard, I told them. And uh, anyways, we went up to Germany. We, we started to go on the highways and hedges to win people to Jesus Christ. And we noticed God already had a witness there. You say, how is that? Uh, we saw it seven times in a row in three different cities in our area. Germans witnessing for Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. White-haired Germans with chick tracks. Hmm. Free Bible giveaway. Sandwich signs. Repent, believe on Jesus Christ. Uh, we would go out there, my wife and I, with her harp. And my wife plays the harp. She's you know pretty good at it. But we'd go out there and try to do something for the Lord. And what would it be happening across the street? Twelve Germans or so singing excellent choir with maybe musical instruments singing for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And you say, what is that? That's a blessing, amen? Amen. <laughs> but, it was a surprise. Hey, we came thousands of miles and God already has a witness here, you know. And uh, not that they don't need it, but, you know, that was such a shock <coughs> to me. As a missionary, sometimes we think uh, Germany is very dark, amen? Much darker than, I believe, here or, or where, uh, from Wisconsin. But, there are, God has a lot of witnesses, amen? And uh, anyway, so at that time, I'm just going to speed it up, is I started to prove all things, hold fast to that, which is good. Before you start church, I said, Lord, do you want us to stay and work around these other Christians? Or is there an area that's darker in Germany? Now, there are very dark areas in Germany. I know that. Bavaria. And uh, anyway, so I started to pray. And we, at that time, we took a trip down to southern Italy to visit a missionary named Mazzaferi. And this, and I'm telling you, you know why I'm telling you all this? Is I'm trying to tell you... Uh, that the Lord works in every step of your life. That's right. When you visit someone, you don't know what will happen. That's you right. don't know what's going to happen tonight, amen? amen? So just be ready for what the Lord will say to you through the Word. Uh, so I went down there to visit an old missionary, and just I didn't have any plans to talk to him about anything. I started to tell him, I'm praying about this, I'm praying about that. What do you say? And this man has been on the field for 37 years in Italy. He's the oldest missionary I know over in Italy. He told me, well, have you ever heard of South Tyrol? I said, I don't even know where that is. And he said, that's in northern Italy. And I told him right away, I said, I'm not even interested. I don't have time for the Italians, I told him. I told him, I, got, I learned German, and it's German people, amen? And uh, he looked at me and he said, Joel, back in the 80s, when I went over to South Tyrol, there's a great need there. It's 97% Catholic. They have no preacher." But they spoke to me in German first and not Italian. Now, when I heard that, you know what I'm thinking. He lost his marbles. You know? I, I truly thought he lost his marbles. I thought, first of all, that's a long time ago. That's the 80s. 
Then I thought, I'm thinking maybe there's gonna be five or 10,000 little people in there. You know, maybe just a little settlement or one city, which is still worth it, amen? But I did not think that it was what you said. So two months later, the Lord said to us, go visit South Tyrol. The Lord closed all the doors, and so we did. And we went down to a place that is the northern province of Italy, as you see, 530,000 people in the yellow area, with about a million surrounding it, with 330,000 in Innsbruck. So you got 530,000 here, and this is the hottest tourism hub, one of the hottest in all of Europe for tourism. Millions of people go here. I'll show you why in a second. But anyways, you have people from all over Italy and Germany coming here. And uh, right here, if you look right here, this is Trento. If you've ever heard of the Council of Trent, that was right there. And that's where the Counter-Reformation started, when the Catholic Church tried to regain everything that they've lost. And this is a very Catholic area, 97% Catholic. So going on here, so when we went down there, right away we saw everything was in German first and Italian. All the street signs, the schools for kids are in German for the kids. It's a German culture, and it's a German society there. Uh, but they also speak Italian. Here you have Oberstraße, Città Alta, Marktplatz, Piazza Mercato. You have German and Italian. Uh, Innsbruck is wide open for the gospel. They just lick up the tracks there in Innsbruck. And uh, here's street preaching a little bit in Brunex. That's one of the cities there in South Tyrol. Uh, as you see, you can put them in mailboxes. That's a huge blessing. <coughs> so a lot of times in Europe, if you read our prayer letter, we'll say, hey, we went and put some in the mailboxes. And you may so that may sound like something that we don't do here, but over in Europe, it's very effective. They come to their mailbox, and they read their mail, you know, looking for bills, and then they get a gospel track. It's pretty effective overseas, and you can get a lot of tracks out that way. Uh, my son, he likes to do it, amen? My, my resolution for 2020 is more child labor. <laughs> more child labor, amen? I think the, kids, the kids really slacked off last year, so we got to step up. Uh, this is the capital on the right. This is uh, in our big city there, street preaching there. And um, so when I got back from overseas, this is my German Bible on the left. I read my German every day. And uh, anyways, uh, my wife right away asked, what do you think the Lord's will is? Uh, you know, my wife didn't have to ask me if there's a need there. You know when there's a need there. When you go to a place that where everyone's lost, everyone, the whole society is given over to the devil, and you walk through it, and you probably, if you've been to a foreign country, you know this, is you're, you, people look at you without you even talking. Right. You just walk around and they think that you're from a different planet because there's something there. And uh, anyways, my wife, we know there's a need there. We felt like fish out of water. You can just tell the spiritual climate is no one's been preaching here for a while. And uh, anyways, my wife said, what do you think? I said, well, there's obviously a need here, but I'm not going anywhere. It's like jumping in the lines down here. I said, I'm not going anywhere unless God shows me in his word. Amen. I've had scripture for everything. And I need God to speak to me. And that's what you should have in your life. Don't yes. move without that book. That's right. Or you're done. Amen. And so I sat down with my German Bible the day after my trip. And I had my Italian Bible there. And I said, Lord, you have prepared us to minister in the German language. There's a need down in this area. Are we the people to go there? If we are, that person, that preacher needs to know both languages. He needs to not only be a minister to the German speakers, but all the Italians that come there, he needs to know both. Am I and my family, are we the ones to go there and bring them the gospel and minister in both these languages? Amen. So then I, wrote, I started to read Romans, and I love the book of Romans, amen? amen? And it says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, separate, or a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separate to the gospel of God. And, uh, well, I'll tell you what, Paul could do some great things, couldn't he? Mm -hmm. But Paul never got away from my gospel. <coughs> Amen? Right. That power of the gospel to change lives. And um, and then I read verse 14, and here it is. This is the Lord used five words in German. Ich bin ein Schuldner beide. Ich bin ein Schuldner beide is right here in verse 14. Ich bin ein Schuldner beide. That's I'm debtor both. I'm debtor both. I'm debtor both to the Greeks and the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel Amen. to you that Rome also. And uh, I was ready then, and I'm, I'm ready today, amen? amen? And I've never been one doubt. I wrote in the margin of your Bible, right when the Lord speaks to you, right in the margin of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Right the day, right how it happened, amen? And uh, I never had one doubt since. 
That's good. Never one dollar. Tell you what, we need to be certain when we're doing something. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll show you here what happened, a little bit of history of South Tyrol. It never was part of Italy. So here you have an area, you see that little box? This is an area that's never been part of Italy until World War I. And I'm going to give you just one second of history. These two men you know, Mussolini and Hitler, they would meet in South Tyrol. Both were dictators, both were Catholic, and they oppressed the people of South Tyrol. I'm not going to get into it, but mainly what happened in World War I is the Allies said, hey, uh, Italy, you come in the war on our side and we'll give you land and money. So Italy joined the war, they got this land overnight. So now it becomes part of Italy. They didn't do anything for it. And then Mussolini and Hitler oppressed the area. And I'm not going to get into it, but the main thing you have to know is this, is Catholic, Catholic, and it's Catholic today. It's always been Catholic. And you know what, the political situation in this country, it goes up and down. But you know what, a lot of times we, we see the economy is going really strong, or it's bad, or you know what? Really, it only uh, people are still people today. Uh, you see that it's a small group that want to get saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's a, there's always a remnant. God right now is looking at us right now tonight. Amen. <coughs> what I mean by that is uh, a lot of times I'm going to preach on it in a little second. Do I have time to preach you things? Yeah. Amen. I'm going to preach in a little bit about the need of the hour. Amen. And the need of this hour, the need of 2020, <coughs> is spirit-filled people yield to God. Right. That's what we need. Amen? And uh, I'm not going to get into politics. I'll do that in a second. Because I know you're watching it. Amen? 97% <laughs> Catholic. And Jesus Christ hates idols. Amen? Right. Man. What a blessing to see. Uh, you know, on the way here, as I drove through on 92, there was a cross on the hills. Amen? And, you know, I know I'm not into idolatry or anything like that, but I thought, you know what? That's good. That's it. Yeah. Uh, you know why? I'm not. I'm glad it's not Muhammad. It's not anything for anyone else. That cross, the old rotary cross, still stands for Jesus Christ. Right. And so you know what? It can be negative, but you know what? I'm just glad that this that's still there in this country and we can do that. You know? yeah. But Jesus Christ hates idols, as you see overseas, they have the Lord on the cross, and that's wrong. That's right. The Lord is not on there anymore. <laughs> he is not here, he is risen. Amen. And um, they really are worshiping Mary. They keep Jesus on the cross, but Mary's always healthy. And that's what the Catholic Church does. And if you're here and you're an ex-Catholic, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Amen. And uh, this is a group of 100 or so people come marching in with this crucifix. Now this is what happened. We were overseas, and we went to this little city called San Lorenzo. And the reason we went there was there was a good man named Jacob Hutter that was born there in 1500. <coughs> and this man uh, preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. He got a hold of Martin Luther's work in Germany. Martin was alive at the time. And he started to preach the gospel. People were getting saved. And the Catholic Church burned him at the stake in our north in Innsbruck. So we wanted to go and preach and witness where he was born and where he dies. So when we went to the city where he was born, this group came marching with this crucifix. And they started singing songs to Jesus and to Mary. And if, when you're in the church and everyone is there after they do a 100 mile hike. And they're all singing songs to Jesus. And then they switch to Mary. There's something satanic about that. That's right. They started singing, Jesus, we're calling out to you. Jesus, Mary, we're calling out to you. Boy, oh boy, they got messed up. That's right. And then you preach the gospel to them, amen? I got to street preach from them. That was the first, that was the biggest church service we've had so far. Amen? Preaching the gospel. Now, there's a lot of castles overseas. There's about 30 or so castles like this in this area. Uh, there's 80 or so mountains. There's a lot of beauty. Uh, 80 or so mountains over 9,000 feet. So there's a lot of mountain tops there. Uh, a lot of skiing. This is a church at 6,500 feet. Uh, five months a year, you cannot go there. It's snowed over. It's uh, too much snow. And so this is the church building I want to get. Amen? I want to get this church building so that I have five months off every year. <laughs> As a preacher, uh, you know, if it snows, I can't come. And right. you won't come. And so, so just pray about that. <laughs> this is our metal here. And... Um, culture and I'm going quicker here while hiking the St. Nicholas Church street preaching there the St. Mary of Ascension Church this is where nunner, nunneries and cloisters all the stuff that you read about the Catholic Church history still going strong in this city this is where Lord Home preaching will be done weekly now this is shared thing real quick when the Lord said go uh, if the Lord sent you to Virginia well then you have to ask yourself what city Lord what, it, what exact city and um, anyways, uh, we prayed, my wife and I were praying, 
And uh, anyways, my wife and I 100% agree, Sterzing. <coughs> this city here, Sterzing, you would say, Sterzing, is, uh, that's the city. So two months after we had taken our trip, uh, we're, we're looking into the city, we're thinking we need to go visit the city more. You say why? The liberty there. I street preached, and a police woman walked right by, looked at me, and let me keep on preaching. Amen? Amen. Uh, if you want to leave, if you want to leave Italy, there's a, a wall of mountains, and you can only get through a mountain pass by the city. So anyways, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this slideshow in a second, but if you can pick this up. So two months after our first trip, we're praying about this city, and I end up talking to Brother Mazzaferi, the brother I told you about, the old man of God. He says, Joel, do you know Jason in Verona? I say, no, I don't know Jason. He said, Jason is a preacher two hours south of where you're going. He just told me he lost a good Christian family who moved up to South Tyrol because of his job. They're discouraged. They don't have a church. Can you visit them? And I said, absolutely. This sounds like a dream come true, amen? Mm -hmm. And I said, where do they live? He said, they live in Sterzing. Have you ever heard of that? And I said, absolutely. Okay. So we went to the place and met the family where we had it all planned to go there anyways. So we got to meet the family the Lord had there, praying for a preacher. So we went there and met Daniele, Antonella, Milania, Emanuele, two kids. Third one was on the way. They're both, the, the Daniele and his wife are from Sicily, but they were raised part of their lives in Germany. They speak both languages. He's in the Italian army. And uh, two weeks ago, my wife talked to her. They're waiting for us to come back. You know? They know they need help from the Lord. They don't have a church. Uh, there's no Baptist church uh, anywhere near where we're going. So praise the Lord, they're waiting for us when we get back. <laughs> and uh, on the day that we were there, the second day we were there, the mother-in-law on the way left, she got saved. Amen. Oh, yeah. She was from Sicily. She was visiting. And Catholic, born again. <laughs> right there. Yeah. And uh, anyways, this is where that Jacob Hutter, as you see the... You see his name here, Jacob Potter, he was burned at the stake right here in Innsbruck, underneath his golden roof, and right at this plaque is Lord willing, where we'll be street preaching every week. This is where my language school is in Innsbruck, and this is where I can street preach, so praise the Lord. And you know what, they can kill you, but they can't kill that book. That's right. And, uh, I got the same book that he had, isn't that something? Amen. That's a blessing. And um, this is where the Council of Trent was, <laughs> so Lord willing, I'm done in two, one minute with the slideshow, I'm sorry it was very long. I know you're tired of it, but Lord will in the ministry will reach up into Innsbruck, that's in the north, and the Italian part of the ministry will reach, reach down to Trento, and Trento is right here where the Council of Trento was held in the St. Mary Church, and uh, I just want to read this real quick, is that the Council, like I said, was to regain the footing of the Catholic Church, and they pronounced 125 curses. Now, if you know anything about religion, religion uses fear to hold you in check. Right. Religion is, I want you to be scared, and you'll keep coming back. Mm. So they had to make people scared again. So they did 125 curses on anyone that doesn't agree with the Mother Church. And I want to see tonight if you're cursed. I think you are. Is um, If you don't believe that Apocrypha is inspired, you're cursed. Mm. Well, you got one. Yeah. You're not going to hear me preach all that tonight. That's right. There's one. If anyone says that justifying faith is nothing else, key word is nothing else, nothing else. And just the confidence in divine mercy which remits sins for Christ's sake, or that is in this confidence alone that justifies us, let him be an athlete. Brethren, we have no other hope outside of Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. I have no plan B. It's him and him alone. Amen. There is no B. I don't have my part, it's his part. He did it all. It is right. Amen. And the last thing is if anyone says that baptism is optional, that is not necessary for salvation, let him be a curse. Let him be an athlete. And you know what? What washes away your sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. The water is afterward. So we're going to go fishing for souls. And we appreciate your prayers. And I'll take a couple questions now just because you might hear someone ask something that you're interested in. And by God's grace, on June 8th we fly back. Uh, we'll start the German church. I'll uh, get some Italian going. My wife already knows Italian. I always kept my wife. It's funny because I told my wife to always speak Italian to the kids. And I said, in Europe you need no three languages. And now i got to learn the Italian, man. <laughs> I never thought it. Now, Italian is a lot... Now, German has already scorched us, so Italian should be all right. But by God's grace, start German church right away. And then um, my brother-in-law, I just saw him after two and a half years in New York City. He speaks fluent Italian. He's called to preach. 
Um, he, uh, he knew he had a bird for Italy, but the Lord never showed him where. And so he sat. And I just saw him after two and a half years. Never really talked to him. He came up to me with his Bible and he said, the Lord gave me scripture. And I'm supposed to go wherever you are. Oh, wow. And he said, I think the Lord wanted me to sit in New York City because you weren't there yet. And now he's already learned German. He knows Italian. Mm -hmm. And he's a called by God preacher. He's a special man. Giacomo. And so he's going to come over in August and survey a little bit. But here he knows. God gave him scripture. <laughs> the scripture God gave him is pretty clear. So he's going to come over. So we've got to send some things to get this area going. So praise the Lord. Is there anyone have a question? Now, what, what I want you to know is this, as far as Germany, Luxembourg, <coughs> Europe is our, is our backyard, amen. Right? I'm all, I'm, this summer I might go to Belgium a little bit, I was in the Netherlands last year. In English, you can go anywhere in Europe, Europe is small. What I mean by that is we're going to serve the Lord there, we can train people in this area from anywhere in Germany, <coughs> anywhere that they speak German, and all the Italians. We can train men and women for Jesus Christ. Uh, but I'm willing to go and preach anywhere. I like going to Berlin, Munich. But we can only be in one place to live forever. So, anyone else? Uh, basically, it's a place where you can get a bratwurst and a cappuccino all in one spot. Amen. So you can wake up now. Amen. So if you like cappuccino and, and bratwurst, come visit. So, I'm going to start to, I think if you have any questions, if you want to just catch me afterward, can I just go yeah. ahead? All right, now it's 705, brother. How late did they put up with it here? Uh, 7.05 a.m.? Yeah. <laughs> okay, just a couple minutes here. A handful of minutes here is... Um, well, what time do you really usually get done? 7.25, okay. But they're going to sing that song, too, so i got to back it up. Right. <laughs> Amen. I don't want to... The last thing you want to do is make some... Uh, Virginia's mad. That's right. This is the uh, land for lovers? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that really? You can tell me later what that is. <laughs> You're seeing diesel trucks, Cummins. You're seeing Silverados. You're seeing trucks with dual exhaust. You're seeing stack, you know, smoke coming off the back. And then it says, land of lovers. <laughs> you talk about contradiction. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you have your Bible here tonight, and um, if you turn to Isaiah 6, and I'm just going to preach about 15 minutes from this passage, this chapter, Isaiah 6, and I'm going to read the whole chapter. Now, when you read your Bible through, uh, like you're supposed to, there's always verses. It doesn't matter how many times you read them, they always pop up. Right. They're always fresh. They're always convicting. They're always a challenge. It's as if the Lord has your number. He knows what you need to hear. And Isaiah 6 is one of those for me. You read Isaiah 6, and it seems like every time, it's uh, the Lord saying, are you going to take the challenge? Are you going to listen for my voice? I have a need. Are you going to step in? It's as if the Lord is saying, can I find a man? Can I find a woman? Can I find someone to go for me? And that's Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6, 1, the Bible says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. And then said, Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. From mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. I also heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes. Let's say, see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tenth. 
and it shall return and shall be eaten as a teal tree and as an oak whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. Lord, thank you for this time. I pray that you'd speak to each one of us and help us to get fed from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Isaiah 6, now if you have your Bible, um, we know the Apocrypha is not inspired by simply reading our Bible. And we don't need any outside sources. We don't. Uh, you can look at the history. You can argue for the history. You can argue. Number one, the Word of God is pure. That's right. And those have those things have contradictions in them with this book. One of the main things is uh, uh here's another thing is in the Old Testament the Levitical priesthood was supposed to set a couple of loaves of showbread on, and it was two rows of six for the twelve tribes. Right. Uh, this book has sixty-six books in it. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's two sixes. Right. That's laid out right there. If you want to read a, a mini Bible, you open the book of Isaiah. Right. 66 chapters. Mm -hmm. Chapter 40. What is it? Comfort ye, comfort ye my people. Right. That's right there. That's what, that's what the Lord is starting out right there in the uh, New Testament. Amen. He's going to the lost sheep of Israel. And uh, this Bible is not put together happenstance. This is not some uh, God puts every comma, every word, every... Right. This book is a divine book. Amen. 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 And so, what are we going to do here? Is we're, let's take a look at the sixth book of the Bible. We're, we're in Isaiah 6 tonight. So let's go back first to Deuteronomy. The last chapter of Deuteronomy. So we go to Deuteronomy. Chapter 34. And so this is right before the sixth book in your Bible, Joshua. So we're in Deuteronomy 34. And you know what is happening here. Is that a great man has done a great man named, uh, named Moses. And De Deuteronomy 34 and verse 5. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab according to the word of the Lord. And then you go down for um, verse 9. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him as did, the, as did, as did and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And there arose now prophets since in Israel, like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Now, turn over to Joshua 1. And, uh, you know, here, here in Isaiah, Isaiah 6, what we're finding is that a king died, a king was died. A great man, this king was a great, uh, a king is a great man. It was not, it's not a chance that this king died. There is no chance God will take you in your time. God took the king. But God is still speaking. And uh, going here in Joshua 1.1, 1, 1, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass. Did you know God is still moving and going and going right. even when you and I are here? Right. Right. And a great man come and go. Amen? In the world, in the, even in the unsaved world, they don't remember their greats. Mm -hmm. Sadly enough, Christians don't remember their greats. That's right. But God is not unfaithful to forget right. your labor of love. Amen. God is a good member. And um, one of the things about this is that uh, Joshua was a, a young man. Joshua was a man that was raised, and it was he was just under the ministry of Moses for years and years and years. And to see this man of God go, you know that was hurting him. That was a big shock. That was it was like Elias. Hey, don't you know that God's going to take your master today? He's going to take your head. And he said, "Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Peace, peace." And you know what is this? Is that death is real, Christian? Death is real, and you're going to have to come to grips with the realities of this world. This world is a cursed world. This world is a world of sin and suffering. This is a world that God has not regenerated yet. He's going to come back soon. He's going to take His throne. There's going to be peace. There is no peace without the Prince of Peace. Right. Amen. And uh, this world is not our home. And you, before the Lord can get your sights fixed on Him, you're going to have to realize this world is not your home. I fear some of you tonight, your eyes are on this world. You're still, you're still amused and maybe you're still admiring this world. This world has something to offer. This world has nothing to offer. Right, right. And great man, another thing as a Christian is once you start focusing on the Lord, one of the saddest things is when you start serving the Lord, I'll put this in my Bible, is one of the saddest things is when you start serving the Lord, I'm going to have to quick, is when you start serving the Lord, you start to look up to people. You start to look up to, you know, the great whoever he is or she is. It could be your parent. It could be anyone. But all flesh is as grass. That's right. And one of the greatest things is when you start to learn as a Christian, and we start to learn, 
We need to trust the Lord. Amen. And our eyes need to be on Him. That's right. He's the one that bought us. Mm -hmm. Our eyes are on Him. So, now, spirit-filled men and women are few and far between. And so when they get taken away from you, that's a sad thing. Amen. That's a very sad thing. And here what you see is that Joshua is losing his friend. He's losing his mentor. He's losing not even, even God is complimenting him. There's not a prophet like Moses. There's not one like him. Even God is saying that. Do so you know what Joshua could say in his prayer life? God, I have a valid excuse not to go on. You took the man of God. You said yourself that he is not like me or you're not. Well, no. You know what happens here? God in Joshua 1.1 1, 1 says, yeah, he's dead. And then he says this, and that the Lord spake unto Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise. Yeah. Amen? It's time to get up and start going, Christian. Right. Right. It's time to go on. There's more land to be done. Joshua, what I have in mind is 33 kings, I believe. Or 30, was it 33 or 31 kings? Joshua, later on in his life, he was a conqueror and he did much work for the Lord. But you know what he had to overcome to do the great work that Joshua did? To lead the people into the promised land, to do to divide the land by inheritance, to do all the great things Joshua did, to take to take down a city like Jericho that looked like a city you couldn't even. There's no one that's going to break this city down. He could do the unbelievable because he overcame. He overcame what? What did he overcome? He put his faith and trust in God. Right. He trusted God fully. He trusted God fully. In Joshua one. He said, the Lord starts saying, be strong and have a good courage. And when God takes something out of your life, He wants you to lean on Him. Amen. And God said, Joshua, be strong and be very courageous. Have not I commanded thee? I'm with you wherever you go. Moses is gone, but I'm with you. It is enough when God goes with you. It is enough. It is enough. I know tonight, it is enough. Amen. It's always enough. It's always enough. God and one man is the majority. Amen. Now go back to Isaiah 6. And the reason I said that is because you see here a man dying, and then now you see the a revelation. And going on here, and I'm not going to barely get any of this sermon done, but that's okay, is uh, you need to have a revelation of him before you can reveal him. Right. A revelation. Moses had a revelation of God. The first time the word holy shows up in your Bible is, take off your shoes, you're standing on holy ground. That's right. And he takes off his shoes. That's Moses. Well, what happens with Joshua? He has a drawn sword. And he says, Are you for us or for our enemies? This is in Joshua 5. And he says, I'm, for, I'm the captain of the host of God. I'm the captain of the host, the Lord of hosts. And Joshua says, Take off your shoes, you're on holy ground. Amen? Joshua had the same revelation that Moses had earlier. Is you're dealing with someone that's holy. You're dealing with someone that's holy, and you're not worthy of serving. And you, I don't need you. I can do it myself. But God wants to use you. Amen. God wants to use you and me. And going on here, he had a revelation that God is holy. And in verse 5 of chapter 6, he says, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone. You know, it's good to come undone before God. Amen. Uh, some of you here, you think, I'm a self-made man, I'm a self-made woman. I have it together. No, you don't. Right. You don't have it together. And the longer that you deceive yourself into thinking you can do it yourself, it's going to be a rough end. That's right. The best is that you go before God and say, I am nothing. Amen. I am undone. Like David said, thou knowest thy servant. Now David had to come to that in himself. Do you really want to be scraping around, spittling at the gate of Moab's king? I don't think you want to be there. You know? That was when David kind of went his own way. <coughs> and you don't have to do that, Christian. You can learn from what's in this Bible. This is written for our learning and admonition. We can say, Lord, I'm undone. This is what I have. Being honest with God. This is where I'm at, Lord. And God can take and use you. Amen? God, you need to have a revelation of God, and you need to have a revelation of yourself. Amen? You need to have a revelation of yourself. Some of us here don't see yourself the way you really are. <coughs> you see the way that many people talk about you. You see the way people, maybe someone has believed you to believe. What does God say that you are? What does God say you are? God says you're a precious soul. Amen? God says that I made you for myself. God says I have a plan for you and a purpose. Amen? But it's only going to be if you follow my voice. And going on to Isaiah here, 
is he, is he need also a cleansing. Amen? Now you're willing tonight. I know you are. But are you clean? Amen? Are you clean? God cannot lay hands on something that's dirty. God will not. His name is too high and holy. He won't do it. But if you're clean, God can lay hands on you. He can use you. God wants a clean vessel. He wants to have a clean vessel. Did you know the Bible says you're a ball of Christ? This is his temple now. It's not just smoke in the temple and you're seeing it. He's in you, amen? Right. And he wants to have a clean place. He wants to have a clean place. So what, what is going to have to happen in your life? You're going to have to have a live... It says here that the seraphim took a live coal and touched him. We're going to need to have some time with this living book. Amen? That's right. Amen. We need something living. Philosophy can't do it. <coughs> Philosophy can only... Mix up what you were at. <coughs> this book can purify. Amen. This book can cleanse you. That's why when you read this, the Bible daily, it does something every time. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. Amen. It, hey, if you have a doubt, I know what the doubt killer is. This book. That's right. right. Amen. Yes, sir. And uh, praise the Lord. And going on here is, uh, I want to get to verse 8. Is you heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Hear my, send me. And, um, I could just go on through this whole passage, but the main thing I want to say this is the voice of the Lord. In one of the Psalms, I think it's 29, it compares the voice of the Lord to a voice that is thundering. A voice that can uh, break cedar. A voice that can make animals have calves, amen? When he speaks, bam, calves are coming out, amen? Some believe this. The voice that divides the flames of, of fire. A voice that divides the waters. But you know what else is the voice of God? God's voice is very powerful. But God doesn't have to yell. God can whisper. Uh, man. His power is right there. You know Elijah? Elijah was a very spiritual man. Even though he was in that cave, he knew even in that cave, God was not in the earthquake. God was not in the fire. Right. God was not in the wind. I'm still waiting. Right. And then he heard this small voice. Now are you spiritual enough tonight to know the voice of God? Oh, are you spiritual enough to know? That's his voice talking to me tonight. And whatever you'll do, Lord, I'll do it. You know, a lot of times in the world, they try to shout over each other. They try to outdo each other, out-trick you, out-talk you. God's not that way. God is, God is saying very simply, God is very simple. I have a need, who will go? And uh, he said, I'll go. Now, he's, the Lord, I just want to say this, when the Lord tells you to do anything for him, um, the Lord tries to be honest with you. And uh, God has guaranteed us that this book will not come back void. Amen? Right. So whenever you read this book, whenever you meditate, when that little boy met a hundred verses he put in his heart, that's not going to come back void. That's right. But is the results are in his hand. And God says here at the end that there will be a tenth that will return. When you go soul winning, as you know, you get rejected all the time. Rejection, 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 rejection. But when one gets saved, amen? Yeah. Man's worth yeah. it all. Yes, it is. And so let's keep our eye on the 10th this year in 2020. And there's a lot you can say here, but I just want to say this is, could the Lord be speaking to you? And uh, as far as being a witness for him this week, maybe being the witness, uh, who, who shall... Lord, the Lord wants to send you back to the unclean people that you got brought out of. The Lord says here, I am unclean, and I dwell in the midst of unclean people. The Lord says here, I'll clean you. Now go back to the unclean people. Uh, here tonight in Pension Gap, there's a lot of unclean people around here. Right. And a lot of times we say disgusting, they're unclean. You know, we walk around as if we're uh, we're, walking, we're John the Baptist now. Amen? No, we're saying. <laughs> they're just like you. That's right. They're just like you. Amen. Without God, without Christ, without hope in this world. Under the power of the devil. Yep. And they can be, they can be just like you. If that live pole comes on, they may clean. That's right. So let's just end with a word of prayer. But if you could just think about tonight is uh, being called to do more. Being called to do more. And I was going to say about the political. Right now, a lot of people are looking at the White House. And I think it's very important to pray for this guy that he gets in there again. Because the other people are looking a little uh, like devils, amen? Yeah. Let's just put it that way. But you know, at the end of the day, is guess what? This country's going like this in a lot of ways. And, uh, you know, the economy and the spiritual climate, those are two different things. And you know what it comes down to? It's revival. When, when that man died, King Uzziah, you know what God looked at his people and saw? They're kingless. But they need a preacher. Amen? Do you know what you need in 2020? What you need is you need preaching. 
And that's why you need to be here. <coughs> what's going to happen is this is what's going to change your life. Amen. This right here. This is what changed the nation over in Israel was a most was a prophet. Amen. Now he did signs and wonders, but he was a prophet. He told them what God said. And that made the difference for the people of God. And that's what's going to make the difference for us is keep your eyes on the preacher and give your attention to this book. Amen. Hello, my name is Charles Barrier, pastor of Calvary Baptist Church here in Pennington Gap, Virginia. Thank you for joining us today. I hope the message that you just heard was both inspiring and a help to you in many ways. I want to take just a moment before we depart to ask you a very important question. And the question is this, are you 100% sure that you're saved, that you're going to heaven when you die? If you're not, that is a very important question that you need to answer. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 9 and 27, it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment. If you don't know 100% for sure that you're saved, the good news is the Bible says you can be. In 1 John 5 and 13, the Bible says this, These things have I written unto you, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. You say, how do I know that I've got eternal life? Well, you've got to come to this agreement that you're a sinner. The Bible says in Romans 3 and 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says also that there's a sentence for your sin. In Romans 6 and 23, it says the wages of sin is death. Now, there are two types of death in the Bible. There's an earthly death, but there's also something far worse, and that is an eternal death. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 14 that the Bible says this, Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. This is a death that is perpetual and goes on throughout all eternity. It's a death where you don't burn up, but where you burn as a payment for your own sins. But here's the good news. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus said this, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Now, if you know that you're a sinner and you know that you need to be saved and you're not 100% for sure that you're going to heaven, the Bible says this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Do you believe that Jesus died for your sins? Do you believe that he was buried and that he arose again on the third day? If you do, then you believe the gospel. That is the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the next step is this. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you ready to take that step right now? Are you ready to turn from your sin and turn to the Savior and ask Jesus Christ to save you? If you are, then right now where you're at would be a great time to do that. Now, if you don't know what to pray, I would like to help you with that. Because it's not a magical prayer that saves you, but many people are oftentimes uncomfortable with praying a particular prayer or just not knowing how to pray. So maybe you would like to pray something like this with me from the very bottom of your heart. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. Jesus, will you please forgive me for my sins, wash me in your blood, and save my soul from hell, and be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. Now, if you did pray just right then and there and ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, and you meant it from the very bottom of your heart, we would love to help you in your new walk with the Lord. We would like for you to call the number that is on the screen and leave us a message and let us know that you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Leave us an address, a phone number, so that we could contact you. We would like to send you a Bible and some materials to help you in your walk with Christ. And we would like to rejoice with you. And we thank you for joining us today. Goodbye.